So, we have our sheet of paper, we have our pencil, we have our ruler, and we're all good to begin. Some of you guys may be wondering how we find the center point, and that's what we really need to find here. So the first thing we need to do, until you get familiar with perspective, is, because you're looking for that center point, fold your sheet of paper in half, and then open it up, and fold it in half again. Okay. So you end up with a nice point in the middle. Right. Your center point is right here. And I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see. Okay. There we go. Right. So you can see. And your center point is right there. Okay. Now, what you want to do on that line. Take your ruler and go straight across. Okay, so you now have got a, you know exactly where you are in your center line. You've got a nice point in the middle. You can put a cross on there if you want. It's a good reference point. Okay, now we're going to have some fun because we're going to take the ruler. Now it helps if you've got a longer ruler for this. And what should happen is we're going to do corner to corner, and every line should pass through the central point, the cross in the middle. Okay, so I'll speed this up for you a little bit so you don't have to sit here and watch me do all of these really, really slowly. And if you do the same thing, and then when we come back, we'll be all ready to begin. Okay, and you should end up with something that looks very similar to this. Okay, if you haven't, it may be a good idea to go back and to practice it and to try it again. Um, and as I say, once you've got this, it makes things a lot simpler because this central point is the furthest point away in your tunnel vision, in your line of vision. Now, once you've got that down, there's so many things you can do with this. Okay, so I think today we're going to do something very simple that includes and involves mountains. And it just so I can show you a few different techniques and a few different things. Basically, everything now here upwards is above eye level and everything here below is below eye level. And that's, again, really, really important. So remember, if you want to take notes, feel free to pause the video and you can come back to it. So, we're going to create some mountains. So, I'm going to place my pencil. It doesn't really matter where you do this. I'm going to create my pencil, shade in a little bit, and start working upwards. Okay. And... We have some small mountains, maybe way, way off in the distance. Okay. And I'll just add in some shadow and some shading here and there. And you don't need to worry about this too much. Your main thing is making sure everything passes and hits the lines. Okay, and that's the really important part. But just to show you different techniques and different things. Okay, so we've got a mountain there. And it's way, 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 way away. Right. So maybe we're going to have another couple that's a bit closer. So I'm going to take this and come on down through here and touch over here and a shadow is still and again that's something we're going to cover in the in later classes is the shadow and the technique and all I'm doing here is imagine like a banana okay and it's that whole looping motion you think about shape and about form in doing this sketch. It also helps that you can see me do it. And all I'm doing is little, almost like little sea strokes, little bananas. Okay. Then we're just bringing those down. 
And if you want to add some shadow and shading on the other side, take your finger, I'll be very careful of which finger I show, <laughs> take your finger and you just, put, just apply some pressure, and push down and it will just automatically create shadow using the stuff that's already on there. Now we've got this big mountain which actually looks like it's in front of this mountain but obviously this one is in front of it. All you do, take your rubber and just rub that out. Okay, I'm not going to spend too long worrying about that. So, we've got mountains away in the distance. Now, to make it even further away in the distance, we can add some little trees. So I'm going to start my trees on this bottom line. Okay, now this is going to be below eye level because it's coming closer to us. Okay, so just a rough indication and just turn the camera around more so as you can see exactly what I'm doing. Okay, and all I'm doing is just wee scribbles, just some wee little lines, keeping it in perspective. Now what should happen is the closer the trees get to you, the bigger they become. Okay. And I've just had an idea. Yeah, I just had an idea. So we're not too worried about the lines just now because we're going to be fading them out. Okay, so just create some land. All I'm doing is taking the pencil and just, as you can see, literally just scribbling backwards and forth. Okay. I'm just putting down some land just down here. The wonderful thing with these videos as well, guys, is that you can slow it, you can stop it, you can go backwards and forwards, you can reverse it, you can rewind it if you need to, and, you know, you can use it as many times as you like. It really, really is there to help. It's a great tool to have. Okay. So we are creating trees that are way, 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 way in the distance. As long as they pass through these lines, Keeping all the perspective and everything that we need. Okay. And then come down at the base because otherwise you've got these nasty lines that are just left there. They'd, they'd be really good for reflections, but we're not looking at reflections today. And press harder than you have been doing. Okay, it's giving the illusion. of land. Okay, so you still get your mountains and your trees are coming towards us. Now the thing is, as things come towards us, they're going to have more detail on them. Okay, that's just obvious. So, if we, for example, we do the same over here, we start bringing things down. Now these mountains look like the way, 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 right in the distance. Okay. And we just and you can see how I'm doing this, just going backwards and forwards. Hardly any pressure because our light is coming from this side over. I am by no means a sketch artist, but these are really good exercises to do in order to um, To help with practice. Okay. So now the mountains look way, way back in the distance. Okay. So what we're going to do? We're going to put in a couple of big trees. Now, normally when I'm doing this with a paintbrush, I would have these as evergreen trees. Give it indication. Okay. And again, doing the same things we did for the mountains. And these are little, just little strokes down. I'm going to put in some evergreen trees. Let's see, I'm not too concerned right now with 
the shape. I'm thinking more in terms of getting the technique right. When it comes down here, just press a little harder because we've got the background to work through. Okay, and there's your first tree. Okay, now, so you've got that coming toward you. You could have trees here, you could have them here. If you want to do a very, very large tree, it's just the exact same thing. A large tree coming towards you. Just do your line, work your way around and down. And remember, it gets bushier as it gets closer to the bottom as well. And that's a really important thing to remember. And just work it backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards. And then eventually you can start doing the same process we did for the land, same process we did for the mountain. Keep the pencil on the paper and just keep sketching. And you just work that all the way down. Just gives you the shape of some simple little trees. Evergreen trees are just fantastic for beginners. And I, I still use them now after 15 years of practice. I don't know if you guys saw in our uh, commercial and things that I actually worked out that I was 135,000 hours worth of practice and study and... Uh, tuition under my belt, so you're definitely in safe hands. Do the same thing. And on the other side as well. Okay, now be very careful as well. I know it's hard at times not to put your hand on the paper as you're sketching, because otherwise, and I did this deliberately, but otherwise you will end up with a big smudge and Nothing's really come off on me, but you usually end up with this big black mark around your hand. So you've now got these trees. I'm going to put some land in. You've got to think about all these little things as you, as you go along. This time you don't want to go too close to your tree, you want just enough that you're covering up the white space, but not so much that you're beginning to cover up the tree. And as I said, guys, perspective is really, really important. And we'll recap at the end of the show as well, so as you guys know what you've learned. Because at first it may seem like, oh, you know, what, what, what have I actually learned? But once we recap it, you'll actually see that you've learned quite a lot. And just follow that in. Now over here it could be running water. To do running water, just very very simple, you just want some indications when you're painting. It becomes a lot simpler because you're actually using a lot of colour with this. You're doing obviously a lot of black and white and you're just going backwards and forwards. You're not moving down too quickly. You want to just be moving backwards and forwards to give the indication of some running water. which is also pushing those mountains into the background. Okay, now around here, obviously you've got these, all these lines and everything and things, you can take your finger and just smudge it and you actually just smudge it in to where the water is, it will add 
some shadow, some texture, again give the illusion of water, which is what we're looking for. Okay, now to add some land, you just press down fairly hard with the pencil, just right on the water's edge. I'm right on the land's edge. Okay, and it's only where you can see the edge of the land. Okay, so that's what you've got to think about as well. Is it's, you're not going to see it everywhere. Okay. And if there's anything about this lesson and tutorial that you're not certain on or that you've got questions about, you know, as I say, do feel free to drop me an email, do free, free, feel free to message me on Facebook as well. Just add a little bit of shadow and shading in there. And there we go. We have, with the exception of this bit over here, but we have a finished sketch. The mountains are way far in the distance. You can see the trees are really up close. You can see the definition that we've created water and we have created some land mass as well. So we're going to quickly recap as to what we've looked at. In this lesson we've looked at perspective, which you can see the grid. And don't forget you always fold a piece of paper and from there you fold it again. And then you put the cross in the center of the page and you start doing the lines out using your ruler. I know my stylish pink ruler. Then we began putting the mountains in and everything, as you can see, passes through one of these lines. And that's really, really key. That it's the tip that's touching the top of the line. Okay. Then we began building things out. We started putting things into the painting to push the mountains further on back. And that included the trees, and they were just simple little lines, as you can see, all the way across. From there, we began going backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards to put in the land mass. From there, we added close up evergreen trees. And if you remember that the little banana strokes as well, similar to the shadows and the shading that you do on the mountains, and from there, we finished it all off by adding landmass and water. Guys, if you have any questions at all about this class, about this tutorial, don't worry, I'm here to help. Your homework for this week is to practice, practice, practice.